Hello, I'm Connie Romans with Oklahoma Career Tech, and this is Career Tech Conversations. Today, we're talking to Justin Seiler. Justin's in our Workforce and Economic Development Division, and he is our Adult and Career Development Coordinator. Justin, thank you for being here. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. I feel like we should have some popcorn in the studio because we've been talking a lot about movies and And the film industry, is it too early for popcorn? Yes, probably. But before we talk about that, I want you to tell me a little bit about your division and what your division does. Who are your customers? Where are your customers? Yeah, very good. So the Workforce and Economic Development Division um, serves our primary client are our technology centers. So each of the technology center district has a version of a workforce and economic development team on their campuses. Um, It might be called something different, but it serves a similar purpose. Um, And they work with business and industry in their local area to either retain, expand, or recruit in new businesses um, to expand job opportunities, job growth, um, and thus economic development and growth. Um, And so that's what our team works to support are those efforts across the state. Those are through different um, economic development initiatives. We have some funding opportunities. Um, Specifically, my role works with short-term open enrollment opportunities. Um, So many of these divisions will provide different short-term training opportunities for folks to either upskill, reskill, earn earn a new credential or a certification. Um, And so that's kind of the main areas that we focus on. Where do your initiatives stem from? Uh, I've heard a lot at the state level, especially uh, their workforce needs and are we filling them and how are we addressing that? Yeah. Um, so just the same as many of our technology center um, initiatives, it's locally driven for the most part. Um, so if there's a local company in that area that needs assistance, rather that's through um, specialized or customized training opportunities, um, our schools can help with that, op- develop those um, training courses or provide those. Or um, sometimes we do work on more of a statewide initiative. If there's a, um, an opportunity to align with the statewide workforce development program, um, for example, a couple of years ago, we did a meat processing training um, that was in alignment with a state need, um, or it could be a local need. So it just kind of depends on what, where that comes from, but it is industry driven. So we have 29 technology center districts. How on earth do you manage to get them all to coordinate together? And that's a, a, a large portion of what our team does. And so I'm a part of a larger team of about nine different people. Um, and so we have regional coordinators who are officed throughout the state at different technology centers, and they serve a specific quadrant or a set of schools. And so they provide that kind of connection between here at Career Tech at the state level and then the schools at the local level. And so they are kind of that conduit for information um, through different Um, processes to help with funding initiatives um, to make sure people are getting funded um, for different projects. And so it's a a lot of back and forth and a lot of miles burning up and down the road, a lot of windshield time, but a good opportunity to interface with people across Oklahoma. I think most people that are familiar with Oklahoma know that we have different parts of the state that have different personalities, so to speak. Do they also have different workforce needs? Yes. Um, You know, Part of the reason why film loves Oklahoma is the diverse economic landscape, um, uh, natural landscape, that piece of it. Um, And just like that, from a film set perspective, it's that way with every industry. Um, In the northwest part of of Oklahoma, you're driven by agriculture and energy. Um, You get into the eastern side of the state, there's different opportunities, whether it's through logging or um, we have a few more tech companies based in northeast Oklahoma, like Google. Um, and so it, every part of our state has a, def, a different economic driver that, that um, supports that, that region. And you did mention film, and we do want to talk fairly extensively about the film industry because that, that's something really cool that's happening to Oklahoma right now. Uh, we've talked to Mark Birch in the BMI division. We talked to John Day in the, the T&I division, and both of their, their groups are involved. And I understand yours is as well. We have so many movies right now, so many TV shows. We've got Killers of the Flower Moon, Reagan, Reservation Dogs, Tulsa King. I mean, these are pretty big deals in the state of Oklahoma. Why? How are we getting these blockbuster shows to come here? Yeah. So film's been around Oklahoma for quite a while. I mean, Rain Man was filmed in parts of Guthrie in the late 80s, um, Twister in the early 90s, 
August Osage County in the early 2000s. And so we've had some big blockbuster films come through Oklahoma, but you're right, there's been an uptick in kind of that cadence in the last couple of years. A big driver of that is um, economic incentives. And so that's where the economic development portion of it comes into play. Um, so the state legislator has passed over the last several years, different levels of film incentives or rebate programs. And so that gives production companies, um, for lack of a better term, incentive to come film in Oklahoma um, because then they can get some some tax credits or different things if they film in our state. Um, they have different markers they have to go by on hiring X amount of Oklahomans to work on their set. They have to use certain amount of local vendors and that type of thing. Um, and so that has really kicked off the um, kind of the renaissance we've seen in film and TV in Oklahoma in the last several years. Um, and then once folks started filming here, they got to know the area and they see the beauty that we have to offer in our state. And if you're located in the metro within two hours, you can be in four or five different ecosystems and different um, you know, vistas to look at as far as from a camera perspective. And so um, it adds a lot of diversity in a, sh in a small area. Um, and so um, the production companies have enjoyed that ability to be able to shoot lots of different types of film and TV series in one area. So initially it might've been the, if you pay them, they will come, but mm -hmm. once they're here, there's a lot to like about the state. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, the, the film industry is naturally kind of transient just by its nature. Um, and so the, it does kind of ebb and flow. They follow the money a little bit. Um, just to be quite honest, but it is once they get here, that's part of the goal of Oklahoma is to is to show what we have to offer and create a an, an ecosystem, if you will, of film and TV production. That way it's easy for them to stay and to do business here. So there are employers in the film industry that need workers mm -hmm. and a large part of your job is to provide those workers through the training that needs to happen. But not everybody is going to be a movie star. <laughs> so what other kinds of opportunities are you preparing for? Yeah. So the film industry is very cool in the fact that it's very vast in the career opportunities that are available. Um, the folks that you see on screen in front of the camera, the talents like you and I are today, um, is a very small um, piece of what actually goes into producing a television show or a movie. And so each of these production sets is almost like a small city. And so any job that you can almost imagine, there's sanitation, transportation, there's accountants in the background and a full business office, um, keeping all of things operating from an income or from a cash flow perspective, safety training and all that piece of it. And then there's the whole crew base that makes sure that the production goes off without a hitch. That's the lighting, that's the grip and electric crews set design and construction. Um, and so there's a lot of different opportunities on a film set behind the camera, if you will. That's where 95% of the work actually happens. And I've heard that even culinary arts gets involved because yeah. of cooking for the, That's the right. crews. And... Yeah. If you've got a full crew on site and you've got, you know, 1,500 employees on site helping with the production of you know, Killers of the Flower Moon, they all have to eat. That's part of their contracts. They have to be fed multiple times a day. And and so dinner and lunch and breakfast is all brought in to them. And so local catering companies have an opportunity to take advantage of that. Um, and so, yeah, even, even culinary arts is represented on a film set. Or even from a food stylist perspective, if there's food in the scene, culinary arts students can um, have experience producing food that's going to be on camera and making sure it looks camera ready. I always watch movies where someone says, I want to be in the movies and the parent or, or the, the guardian says, oh, that's a, that's a really bad idea. You'll never make a living doing that. Is this like steady work? If I'm building sets or, or mm -hmm. doing any of the jobs that you mentioned, am I going to have a job for a long time or just a, a very short period? The, the nature of the film industry is, is fairly unique in some aspects um, from, a, from a consistency, especially in Oklahoma. If you're in a state or an area that has a well-established, think, you know, Southern California or Atlanta in Georgia, you can be busy all 52 weeks out of the year if you wanted to. In Oklahoma, we are getting very 
um, far down the road towards that, but we're not quite there yet. That's part of this workforce development initiative. And that's where the film incentive pa packages come in to create an environment where there's more consistent productions. And so starting out in Oklahoma, it could possibly be a little hit or miss. Um, you might, you might work for several weeks. You might be on a, on a production for six months, and then it might be a couple months before you're on to the next. However, it's a very relationship driven industry. And so once you get on a set and you work hard and you show what you're capable of doing and you make those connections with other um, colleagues and peers who are working alongside you, um, that ups your odds significantly in being more consistent in your work because then they'll be on a project and they'll say, hey, we need X person to help us fill out this crew. They'll be like, mm, I worked with Connie. She was great. Let me call her and see if she is available. She's available. <laughs> Just Pack anywhere. your bags. <laughs> <laughs> Off camera, you and I had talked about some of the the retooling of the workforce members. Um, maybe they had a job doing something similar, but in a completely different venue. Yeah. So tell me about some of those stories. In, in visiting with film industry, um, we've been trying to uncover where the specific workforce needs are. And one of the bigger areas of need is in their skilled or craft trade positions. And so that's, think, a set construction person or props and um, set decoration grip and electric, that type of thing. And so there's opportunity for people who are maybe in a film adjacent career, but might not realize it. So if you're a trained carpenter and you're used to building cabinets and trimming out or finishing an inside of a house, then with a little bit of extra training, you could be an excellent candidate to pivot into film and be a set construction person. Um, and so there's an opportunities for people who maybe work in a traditional skilled trade and are maybe film curious or a film's coming to their area and they want to take advantage of that opportunity to to work on that film in their hometown um, with just a little bit of training on set etiquette, typical set jargon to be familiar with, um, hierarchy, those types of things. We can pivot them pretty quickly into working on a film set using the skills that they developed in industry. You and I are kind of entrenched to me much more than you in the career tech system. I've been in, involved for 32 years. <laughs> So I know what to do if I want to express interest in a course or a program or some kind of training, yeah. but not everybody does. Yep. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of opportunities throughout the Curtech system to train for film. It's um, not necessarily a new bag of tricks for us. Um, on our full-time programs at technology centers and even in some of our high schools, we've been teaching video production, multimedia, um, digital production, those types of things, um, TV and broadcast. Um, and so that's a very easy pivot into film. The, a lot of the principles and, and, and common standards are the same. It's just putting it in a different context. Um, from the short time uh, or short term open enrollment course perspective, which is the area that I predominantly live in, um, again, not a new piece of it. We're just putting a new lens and a new filter on it to make it more applicable to the to film workforce development. Um, so that includes anything from script writing. Um, we've had lots of our technology centers have offered short courses in that creative space of like, so you want to be an extra or um, how to develop your first screenplay or things like that. Um, and so now we just have to add a little bit of a different flair to it. And it's still very applicable to um, training and getting a, um, an opportunity to start in the film industry. So how do I find out about things like that? If you're in a technology center district, if you look on their website, um, there's a piece of it. Um, we don't have a centralized career tech website just yet. That's on the to-do list for 2023, um, but we haven't but we haven't got that developed just yet. But um, looking at your local technology center piece of it, or um, if there, if your local technology center is not hosting a course that meets maybe a personal interest that you have or something like that, um, our open enrollment courses are open to anybody from any part of the state or even outside of Oklahoma. And so you can um, search through those courses online um, and then you can always contact me. Um, I don't know if there's a way we can put my email address in here, but people can contact me and I'm happy to connect them to the right resources. Why don't you just share that email address? And if they struggle with that, they can always find you on uh, the, the Career Tech website. That's right. Very good. My email address is justin.siler, that's S-I-L-E-R, at careertech.ok.com. Gov. Great. When I told you that I wanted to have you on the show to talk about 
the film industry, you're very passionate about it. And I know that we talked about 10% of what you really wanted to talk about. Yeah. So help me out here. What did we not touch on that, that you would really like to, to address? I think we've covered just about everything. It's a very dynamic and evolving industry in Oklahoma. Um, the, the growth that we've seen over the last couple of years um, has has provided a lot of opportunities for workforce development and for Oklahomans to get involved in the film industry. Um, again, the the decisions that are made at the Capitol regarding film incentives kind of set the tone for how sharp or how slight um, workforce demand might be in the next um, couple of years. But it is a growing industry no matter what happens. And so there are lots of opportunities for people to get involved, um, to get connected um, because like I said earlier, it's a, it's a relationship driven business. And so who, you know, um, plays a big part in developing your, your film industry career. So we're just, um, here to help people get trained and get started and make those initial connections. And then, um, if we train them right, they'll do well. <laughs> Very good. You and I can probably come up with a pretty long list of movies or TV shows that did not depict Oklahoma in the most positive light. <laughs> Uh, what do you think that all of these shows, some of the ones that I read on my list earlier, are going to do for the the image of Oklahoma in the future? Yeah, I think um, I think that continues to show us in a positive um, in a positive light. Um, I think things are are improving in that standpoint. If you look at Killers of the Flower Moon, um, that's that's premiering this year, um, there was a lot of time and effort dedicated to make sure that that story was told accurately. Is it necessarily the entire tragic history of that story, a positive um, reflection on our state history? Maybe not completely, but um, it's being true to that story and being true to the um, impacts that it had on the Osage Nation, I think, is a, um, is, will be a, an overall positive impact for Oklahoma in telling our story. Um, if you look at other 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 productions and things like that. I think it's it's continuing. Reservation Dogs is another one that's that's gaining a lot of positive um, impact for film and TV in Oklahoma and telling the stories of Oklahomans. It's important information for yeah, sure. It is. Very it. Well, I appreciate you being here with us this morning, this afternoon, whatever time you happen to be watching or listening. Uh, for more information about Career Tech's workforce and economic development or other Career Tech programs, follow us on social media. You can keep up with Career Tech Conversations on Facebook and Twitter at Career Tech Convo. And you can find our audio podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you'll join us again for Career Tech Conversations. I'm Connie Romans. <laughs>